In this segment of Leading by Example, John Hauser, Director of Project Management at Spectrum Healthcare Partners, talks about how to reprioritize effectively and how being able to pivot without mercy became critical for business planning during the epidemic. Thank you for joining us for this segment of Leading by Example. I'm John Hauser, Director of Project Management at Spectrum Healthcare Partners, and I'll be answering questions about how to effectively reprioritize in a quickly changing landscape. We implemented the Safe or Scaled Agile framework, and we just finished our training of our employees about a month before COVID really started hitting the U.S. shores. And in that, one of the mantras is really pivot without mercy, which really means going down the road this way, but be prepared at some point you may realize something's different and you need to take a left turn. You need to go this way. And this COVID-19 was really the definition of being able to pivot without mercy. So we just finished showing people and talking about this and here it is actually coming to fruition. Some of the things we actually did in here, the first one was we actually took a look at all of our features that we were working on. We had 20 plus features we're working on with a various number of teams. And we identified what were the top three that we had to do that had to keep going along. And then we kept those going along, we kept those teams intact. And then the other 17 or 20-ish features, we actually redirected those teams. We took those teams and we put them on something, all the critical items. The second big thing we did is we actually had daily stand-ups twice a day. So usually you have these once a day and that's when a team gets together, does a quick check-in of where am I, what's in my way, and this is what I'm gonna be doing. But we actually had that twice a day because things were changing so fast with COVID, daily, hourly it felt like, we actually had that meeting twice a day to make sure the teams were always in sync on what was happening and understanding where the items were. And the third thing we did was put in a Kanban board. Uh, typically, these are on a wall and they're very uh, visual. They're you know, in an office, uh, but we had to do an electronic version, so we had an electronic one. And what these are is they represent the work that is being done in an iteration or in a sprint. So each piece of work is almost a card on here, and it moves through these different lanes or states of work. And you can think of those lanes as actually how do you add value to it. So I get a card at the beginning and it has no value done on it. It's like I've identified it. And then it goes to another state of, okay, hey, someone's taking this on, they're starting to work on it. Okay, maybe there's some initial research. And then it moves to another state of, okay, they're, now they're actually working on it. So it's actually that value that you add until you get to the last lane when it's really, I'm done. And that's what this enabled us to do, is actually see all the work and then each employee could see if something's not moving, how can I help move that along? And because we were acting so fast, people were able to just, hey, let me give you 20 minutes of my time and I know I can get into the next stage for you. So some of these new projects that came out of the woodwork are just, you know, when we did that pivot without mercy, these were the ones that we were pivoting to. Some of those projects uh, were big ones. We had no telehealth at the beginning. We, we had really didn't um, dive into that at all at this point. So we had to get that working very quickly because patients weren't, uh, able to come in or didn't want to come in and be exposed. So we put up a whole large telehealth uh, solution, you know, within days. Um, training people, getting, getting it out there so that they knew how to use it, so that our patients knew how to use it, so it was an easy to use solution. Also part of that telehealth is just the guidelines are changing so fast from every payer on what they allow, how do we bill it, you know, what are the different things we have to put in the notes, um, have they consented, you know, uh, what is CMS telling us uh, now, you know, how can we do physical therapy, is that covered yet? So all of those different pieces we also had to collaborate and put together and make sure that we were educating our providers on exactly what they can and can't do at this moment. And again, it was changing day by day. Those top three features we had to keep going. We had to find different ways to make those keep going because what we thought before, we'd be having meetings and all in one room and we would all be able to caucus and figure this out, but now it all had to be remote. So we had to really rethink some things. One of them was a large uh, software vendor we were doing. We we're gonna have a 
few vendors in here and showing us what they're doing where we could touch it and feel it and go through the questions. But we had to do all of that remote. Uh, we set up a lot of different, we got very good at setting up remote, um, remote meetings, how to tape those meetings for people that couldn't make that exact time. Um, and actually I had some people come back and say, you know, now that we did that remotely, it may actually have been better than when it was in person. Thank you again for joining us for this episode of Leading by Example. I'm John Hauser. If you have any questions about what I discussed today, please don't hesitate to contact us. We may have resources that can help your organization.